competition law, I think, has to be part of a much larger view and a, 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 a much larger sense about how you use competition policies to, to kind of deal with problems in the economy and to, to kind of use a, a, a kind of variety of tools to steer the economy in, in one way or an, an, an another. Um, so, so if the process was up to me, I think I would, I would certainly have had a much broader review of uh, competition policy and, and, and kind of really understood how, how, what the, the kind of impact and, and what the efficacy of, an, of a range of, of, of tools would be and, and what our experience in the last 25 years has been and then deal with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, with, with the specifics of the competition law amendments within that. And, and I think it's important be, be, because um, the, the uh, 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 c competition law has to operate within a certain framework. And, and, and I think there is a justifiable concern that we might be trying to do a little, we, we, we are trying to do everything within, within this, the, the competition law uh, uh, space. It seems there is a risk that because other parts of government have and other policies have not worked very effectively to deconcentrate the economy, such as development finance, uh, support entrance, that there's a process to try and find ways in which the competition law can, can help. Um, and I think that's something that it's important to debate. I think that there's, there's an obvious risk in that. But I think it also begs another question, which is um, we don't have a competition, an overarching competition policy. Um, which deals not just with what the competition authorities do. Um, and, 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 and it's striking that there's very little mention of competition in the National Development uh, Plan. Um, if you search for competition, you'll find, I think, a couple of small paragraphs. And given that what we're really talking about is how a market economy works, uh, uh, I, think, you know, I think it'd be good in context of the debate, separate from the specific amendments, that this issue gets pushed, uh, I think, you know, repeatedly. A lot of these sectors are getting disrupted by technology, but regulation is not keeping pace with that. Um, and there's much to be said about potential regulatory fa failure on that, but this is exactly where either an overall competition policy for government um, or, or framework needs to be in place, or um, the Commission, through its interactions or market investigations, needs to examine some of these more closely. Competition policy has to be aligned to other public policies, uh, programs, and, and interests. And uh, we assume that the National Industrial Policy Framework and the Industrial Policy Action Plan would be one of those. We need to differentiate and make a very clear uh, a distinction between collusion and collaboration and uh, uh, the necessity f to build a clear collaborative relationship between companies who must also compete with each other, as well as a collaborative relationship between the state and the private sector. There's a tension between those two issues and uh, it's, an, it's a healthy tension, but if we get the tension wrong, then I think we will uh, perhaps be guilty of falling prey to, is there, is there such a word, there's a lot of professors in the room, of uh, competition fundamentalism. We have to have a discussion, and it's unfortunate that the panel hasn't discussed this with the DTI. What are the exclusions? What are the safe harbors for the deployment of other industrial policy uh, measures to support uh, black economic empowerment, new entrance into uh, the industrial economy in circumstances where, let's be very clear, we are in deindustrializing and with the fourth industrial revolution we are potentially facing another wave of deindustrialization. We must be very careful about the 
it's very complex regulatory space. All of the concerns and anxieties and questions that have been posed and raised are the ones that we've been debating with the minister through the entirety of this process. So questions around capacity, around resource, around the institutional frameworks, around the relationships with other uh, regulators and institutions, around the policy debate that's necessary uh, with the other uh, policy areas that are implicated here, understanding that polycentricity, understanding that complexity, uh, the fact that if those questions aren't addressed, implementation of these amendments will be a false promise and will, will uh, not meet expectations. Um, that is certainly the contextual debate that the panel has been having with the minister, and, and as we understand it, the, you know, the minister has had uh, in his engagements at cabinet level and with other uh, the other stakeholders and other processes that he obviously uh, engages with around the amendments, you know, at NEDLAC and and the like. The overarching uh, impression I've gotten this morning, and hopefully you've you've shared, is that this is a significant intervention, but it is insufficient alone to address concentration and the racially skewed ownership profile of, of our economy. But it certainly is one uh, arrow in the quiver that we need, to be, we need to be using. The goal is to reduce concentration towards lowering prices, increasing output, uh, and achieving all those benefits that competition or competitive markets bring. Um, so in that setting, Competition law has a number of instruments already built in to try and address some of these challenges. The Commission has been very active or very aggressive in clamping down cartels, uh, dealing with anti-competitive measures, bringing conduct cases, but still the levels of concentrations persist. Uh, and it does not seem that they are a result of, of efficiencies or innovation, but it's really uh, 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 that privileges, collusion, uh, exclusionary behavior are persisting in markets. So these whole, the, the, the amendments bring an extra, extra tools to the commission to enforce aggressively. Uh, if we assume that there will be revisions to the draft bill that has been commented on in light of those submissions, then there's a process where it has to go back through the uh, cabinet process first. So that's the economic cluster, uh, committee meetings, cabinet committee meetings, and then cabinet. Once it's through that process, uh, the parliamentary process can start. So obviously given, you know, opening of parliaments, you know, the, the, uh, what the, the impact of SONA and the budget speech on parliamentary uh, activity, it's likely to be sort of end of Feb, beginning of March before uh, parliamentary work could commence, assuming that any revisions to the draft bill at that point have gone through the cabinet process. So we would then expect uh, parliamentary committee engagement, and of course that's a further opportunity for public comment and participation, and then obviously it would go through, <coughs> go through the House for, uh, for adoption after further debate. So the expectation at the moment is that the bill would be uh, passed through parliament during the course of the year, probably I would expect the third quarter, perhaps beginning of the fourth. <laughs>